Title. The Last Recording. In the small town of Millfield, nestled between thick forests and fog-laden hills, there was an abandoned radio station known as WMLF. It had once been the pulse of the town, a place where the latest hits and local news flowed through the airwaves, but after a series of mysterious disappearances and a chilling incident involving one of its DJs, the station fell silent. Until then, it had been a lively hub, now, it was merely an echo of what once was. One dreary autumn afternoon, a group of friends, Sophie, Lucas, Mia, and Ethan, decided to explore the decrepit remnants of WMLF as part of their weekend adventure. Armed with flashlights, a camera, and an insatiable curiosity, they made their way inside, the door creaking ominously as it swung open. As if this place could get any creepier, Lucas whispered, glancing around the dust-covered lobby filled with peeling wallpaper and forgotten posters. Mia giggled nervously, while Ethan pushed forward, snapping photos of the grainy interior. Sophie, the most daring of the group, suggested they search for the station's old recording equipment. The group ventured deeper, following a narrow hallway that seemed to stretch endlessly. They found themselves in a control room filled with outdated consoles and reels of tape. One machine, covered in dust, caught Sophie's eye, an old audio recorder, its tape still intact. Look at this, Sophie exclaimed, brushing away layers of dust. The excitement was palpable, let's see if it works. With little thought for the station's history, Sophie fished out some batteries from her backpack and inserted them into the recorder. As the machine whirred to life, an electric charge seemed to fill the air. Ethan and Mia exchanged uneasy looks, while Lucas leaned in closer, intrigued. Let's record something, Sophie suggested, her voice trembling slightly. We can pretend we're hosting a show. Quote, as they laughed and spoke over the scratching static, a sudden chill swept through the room. The lights flickered and the recorder sputtered. A strange voice pierced through the static, barely audible but undeniably chilling. Turn it off, before it's too late. What the heck was that? Mia gasped, taking a step back. Ethan's face went pale. It's probably just an old recording, Lucas said, trying to sound brave, though the quiver in his voice confirmed his unease. Let's listen to what else is on here. Quote, against Mia's better judgment, they pressed play. The eerie voice repeated, turn it off, before it's too late, but this time, it was louder, almost frantic. The friends exchanged puzzled glances, unsure if they should continue. Sophie pressed her lips together, torn between curiosity and the primal instinct to flee. What if we just hear a little more? The recording shifted from the disconcerting messages to laughter and cheerful banter, reminiscent of precious moments from the station's glory days. But as the tape continued, the laughter became distorted, turning into agonized screams that echoed through the room like a haunting specter. Stop it, Mia shouted, panic rising. This isn't funny anymore. In a fit of fear, Sophie lunged forward, reaching for the stop button, but at that moment, the room grew frigid. Shadows cast by their flashlights twisted unnaturally on the walls, elongating and warping. The tapes hissed and sputtered, the voice now screaming, turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it. Suddenly, the recorder's power surged, and for a fleeting moment, they saw something in the shadows, a figure draped in darkness, its face hidden but oppressive. With a deafening crackle, everything went silent. What was that? Ethan's voice trembled as he steadied himself against the wall. The group stood frozen, the air thick with dread. As if in response to their fear, a cold wind rushed through the room, slamming the door behind them. They were trapped. Sophie grabbed the flashlight. We need to leave, now. She turned to the recorder, desperate to salvage something from their nightmare, but the moment her fingers brushed against it, the screen flashed ominously. The distorted face of the DJ, the one who had disappeared, flickered across the display, mouth moving but silent. Mia screamed. It can't be, he was never found. With their hearts racing, the group bolted for the door, but it wouldn't budge. As they desperately pounded on it, the recorder spewed forth a cacophonous blend of voices, some familiar, others completely foreign, calling out for help, for escape. Help us! The voices echoed, chilling their blood. Turn it off, before it's too late. Finally, in a surge of adrenaline, Ethan pushed against the door with all his might, and it flew open, crashing against the wall. They stumbled into the cool night air, 
gasping for breath as they fled from WMLF. Once they reached the edge of the forest, they stopped to catch their breath, the oppressive air finally lifting. Ethan took one last look back at the shadowy outline of the station, a lump of dread settling in his throat. They never spoke of that day again. WMLF remained silent, but the voices stayed with them, a haunting reminder echoing in the quiet moments. Whenever darkness enveloped them, they could almost hear the faint whispers of the audio that never should have been aired, the chill of desperation and longing clawing at the edges of their sanity as they wondered what had really happened inside that cursed radio station. And in Millfield, the truth remained hidden, unsaid, but always, always lurking, waiting for the next curious soul to stumble upon its dark, twisted secrets.